Hey guys! So, the Himalayas work as a water station for southern and southeastern Asia. Over 10 large rivers begin in Tibet. Over the last 10 years, India and China, the two largest geopolitical forces in the region, have been in a hydroelectric race to use the river's power. The rivers that flow from the Himalayas show no political borders. They are the Brahmaputra, the Yangtze, the Mekong, the Sutlej, the Indus, the Salvan, the Huanghe, and more. The Brahmaputra has a total length of 1,790 miles and a total drainage area of 221,388 square miles. It runs through China, India, Bhutan, and Bangladesh. The river is known as Yarlong Sangpo in China, Siang Brahmaputra in India, and Jamun in Bangladesh. Brahmaputra is vital to the lives of the people and animals on its banks. The river feeds the relatively young and fragile ecosystem on the eastern Himalayas, as well as various human communities that are on its banks. In recent years, the Indian and Chinese governments have decided to direct the Brahmaputra, or as the Chinese call it, the Yarlong Shangpo, by building hydroelectric dams. The problem is this river runs through the tallest places in the world. It begins in the glaciers of western Tibet and is at an average altitude of about 16,400 feet above sea level, coming down from the Himalayas. The drop into the Yarlong Sangpo Canyon is 8,800 feet, which generates particular interest for massive hydroelectric potential. So last year, China announced their plans to build a 60 gigawatt mega dam on the Yarlung Sangpo River, about 60 miles from Lhasa, the administrative center of Tibet. It will be the world's largest hydroelectric plant, AGP. The dam project will be according to a five-year plan from 2021 to 2025. Now, according to Chinese experts, the Yarlung Sangpo River provides the greatest water resources in southwestern Chinese Tibet, about 80 gigawatts, while the 31-mile part of the Yarlung Sangpo Canyon has a 70 gigawatt potential. In total, Tibet has about 200 gigawatts of water resources, which makes up about 30% of China's total hydroelectric potential. Now, according to the estimates by the Chinese Hydroelectric Association, using an HAP on the Yarlung Sangpo River could provide 300 billion kilowatt hours of clean, renewable electricity per year and could bring Tibet $3 billion in income per year. The mega dam may provide triple the energy in the future than the current largest dam in China and in the world, the Three Gorges Dam. However, Tibetan rights groups and environmental activists have criticized the project. Experts are worried about how it will affect the river that Tibetans consider sacred. The Tibetans believe the river is the body of the goddess Jore Pakmo or Vahavarahi, the most important female goddess and the third most important overall after Dali and Panchen Lamas. Tibetans respect the nature of rivers and believe that they have a divine origin. According to their beliefs, it is forbidden to wash in rivers. You can only get water from one and wash at home. Until Tibet's annexation by China, dams weren't built there because they were taboo. Another problem is moving the people who live where the dam will be. Regions surrounding the Yarlung Sangpo aren't as densely populated as the areas around the Yangtze River, where the Three Gorges Dam is, but that construction required the repopulation of over 1.4 million people. Nevertheless, about 14,000 people will be displaced. It's important to note that the construction of the dam on the Yarlung Sangpo River is part of fulfilling a concept to achieve carbon neutrality for China. That means they will achieve zero waste by 2060. This plan includes building a series of hydroelectric dams in Tibet and the largest one will be in the Yarlung Sangpo River Valley. This place has historical significance. It's where the Tibetan government was created. Since the Chinese economy is experiencing an electricity deficit, 
it's likely that the produced electricity will be used to cover their losses from transitioning from carbon-based fuel to cleaner energy. But despite China saying they won't build any new coal power plants abroad, their ban on coal generation is a sore topic inside the country. In the fall of 2021, China ran into an energy crisis. The lack of electricity in the northern regions caused blackouts, and manufacturers, including ones for Apple and Tesla, were temporarily shut down. The power outages in China have been the central topic on Chinese media recently. The media have admitted a series of reasons for the energy crisis and have received criticism from the governments of different regions. The problem with electricity supply in the northeastern provinces of Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang affected the industrial factories, as well as the residential sector and key social buildings. In total, at least 20 Chinese provinces experienced blackouts, rolling electricity outages or a demand from the government to limit electricity use. The new power plants operating on coal and natural gas, totaling 56.37 gigawatt hours built in 2020, which produced record amounts of energy for the last five years, didn't help. Some of the media are asking if the government really needs to choose between economic growth and fulfilling their plan to decrease emissions. There are also concerns in India. After the Chinese announced their plans to build a dam, the Indian government got to work. This all happened with an unstable relationship with China in mind because of a conflict in the disputed region of Aksai Chin in 2020. The planned mega dam will be just 18 miles from the Indian border, just several hours after the dam was announced in the Chinese state daily newspaper. On December 1, 2020, information came out that a 10 gigawatt dam would be built in the northeastern Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh that borders China. The project is being looked at by the national government. A week later, representatives from the State National Hydroelectric Corporation said that the 2,000 megawatt power dam on the Sebserini River in the border state would be ready for use by March 2022. The announcement was made after delays that led to an increase in cost of the project to $3 billion. The Indian government looks at the northeastern region that is made up of eight border states as the main potential source for renewable energy in the country. Back in 2001, the Central Administration of Electric Energy planned to build 168 large hydroelectric plants with a potential of 63,000 megawatts of electricity in the Brahmaputra River Basin. According to the report, the surface water resources in the region are about 23 trillion cubic feet large. That is 34% of the country's entire water resources. The Indian government thinks that hydroelectric dams in the region will be able to decrease the effects of flooding as well as provide an alternative source for clean energy. However, the hydroelectric projects are the reason for floods in the region. This is proven by the fairly negative experience of using dams on the Raganadi River in Arunachal Pradesh and the Kapli River in Dimahaso in Assam. As far as floods go, India traditionally doesn't want to notice that their dams are the cause. But they say China is building an HEP on the Brahmaputra, which could cause floods in India and Bangladesh. Since China, in case of a poor relationship, which has been strained since the border conflict in 2020, could suddenly release water built up in reservoirs inside their own country. The construction of a dam in Arunachal Pradesh lets them create more space to store water to compensate for the influence of the Chinese dam on the river. On the other hand, China either will cause floods in the bordering Indian territories or remove their water. But the country that will suffer the most from these dam projects is not in India. It's the densely populated Bangladesh, which is friendly to China. The flow of fresh water from Tibetan glaciers feeds the rivers in the region like the Brahmaputra, which provides drinking water to about 1.8 billion people in China, India, Bhutan, and Bangladesh. But the Brahmaputra is the largest source of fresh water for Bangladesh. More and more pressure on the water supply will cause a refugee wave to India that is already home to millions of illegally settled Bangladeshi. Strange enough, another very possible problem caused by building mega dams is drought. In the past, 
Chinese hydroelectric plants on the Mekong River cause droughts in low coastal countries like Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. China, as expected, denied the blame. But because of this, the Chinese mega project might be a source of instability for the two Asian giants. If no one stops China, similar actions might be stopped by the damage the damn project will cause to the Chinese people and the future of Beijing itself. Because of superfluous blockages of China's internal rivers, a serious hit to the ecosystem was made, which began the fragmentation of rivers and the disruption of the floods, which naturally boost agricultural harvests by spreading soil. In August this year, about 400 million Chinese citizens were in a catastrophic situation because of record flooding caused by the Three Gorges Dam. If the mega dam on the Brahmaputra breaks, which is possible because it will be built in a seismically active area, millions of people along the river could die. The large Himalayan ridge is home to thousands of glaciers that are origins of the largest river systems in Asia, which are in turn the source of water for almost half of the planet's population. If the glaciers continue to deplete, not even saying that it will be accelerated by China's ecologically catastrophic activity, China won't be able to avoid the flood. By participating in a race to build dams on the Brahmaputra, China and India are creating negative consequences for the environment outside the river's ecosystem and threatening the existence of over 100 million people that depend on the river. It's hard to understand where the truth is, since the dams are hidden in remote valleys and deep mountain canyons. But that's where an endless battle between economic growth and the environment is taking place. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and comment if you learned something new, and uh, we'll see you again next time.